Today at Simply Knock, we have a special treat for you as we unbox a Hades Canyon prototype. I uh, received this from Intel for us to show at CES. You can see that it is um, the 100 watt version. This is the VR ready version. It's got the KB Lake G, G um, but this is a new processor. It is the 8809G, uh, specially made, and this is the first product that has it. And you can see it's a 230 watt power adapter because it is a lot of power in this unit. And uh, you can see that it's uh, sent to Simply Nut. So let's take a look inside. Now this is considerably, uh, they sent us a USB key with the OS drivers on it since uh, we can't get them anywhere else. There's a little tool to open the top, some screws. Now one, uh, two differences. One, this is considerably larger than the Skull Canyon. And I will go get a Skull Canyon so that you can see the difference. And there she is. There is the back. And here is the front. One of the primary differences is to add RAMs and SSD, you have to open the top instead of the bottom. So there's no screws on the bottom. Uh, this is a top load. And I'm going to move this very heavy. It's got the power adapter in there. You see the power adapter is uh, almost the size of a uh, Skull Canyon. Just give you a size comparison. And I'll show you a size comparison with the Skull Canyon in a little while. But the reason is, uh, this has a discrete graphics chip. Lots of uh, graphics DDR memory. And a high wattage processor. Taking a look at the comparison to a Skull Canyon, I've lined up the right side and the back. So you can see uh, there's about a half inch perhaps of, of more width. And there's about an inch of more depth. And then it's about twice as tall. Maybe not quite twice as tall, but close to it. Reviewing the front panel I.O. connections and starting from the right side, we have a 3.5 millimeter tip ring ring sleeve HD audio jack that supports a microphone, a stereo headphone, or a stereo headset, which combines both. This is a type C USB 3.1 10 gigabit connector. It also supports USB 3.0. This is an HDMI 2.0 connector that supports 4K at 60 Hertz. Next, we have a USB 3.0 Type-A connector with high amperage uh, 2.1 amps worth of power supplied so that you can quick charge a tablet or cell phone. So this is considered a charging port and that's the reason for the different color. Next, we have a USB 3.1 Type-A connector. This is actually 10 gig per second and supports the 5 gig per second USB 3.0 as well. We have a SD card, full-size SD card slot. And of course, with an adapter, you can support the smaller cards. This is a consumer IR lens, and behind there is a consumer IR receiver. And this should work with an RC6 compatible remote control for controlling a media center software. We have the power button, and the power button has a light as well as three other LEDs, and these four LEDs are controlled in the BIOS by what they do and what color they are. And along the top, you can see these four holes. This is a quad array microphone uh, for picking up audio. And then you can see the ventilation holes in the front. Taking a look at one of the sides, we have a Kensington lock which also locks the lid on. And uh, you can see this is also ventilation holes. And then on the other side, these are ventilation holes as well. And the bottom, we have the two screws for the Visa mounting, and we have ventilation holes as well to help cool some of the components. All right, continuing on with the back, 
And starting again from the right side, we have an HDMI 2.0 port that supports 4K at 60 hertz. We have four USB 3.0 Type-A connectors. These are five gigabits per second. We have two gigabit Ethernet port RJ45 connectors. One of these is built into the chipset and the other one is a discrete uh, gigabit Ethernet chip. Intel claims that there will be server drivers for both of these ports. Next, we have two mini display port 1.3 uh, ports and these support MST so that you can daisy chain up to three monitors each. Uh, two of the monitors can be 4K with the third one being a, one, a 2K by 1K monitor or all three of them can be 2K by 1K. These are Thunderbolt 3 ports on a USB 3.1 Type-C connector and the USB 3.1 uh, types are, it's also supported for 10 gigabits per second. Also on these connectors is the display port in the alt DP mode so that you can drive monitors from these connectors. So you can see all told that there are two HDMI, two mini display port, and two type C alt DP ports for driving six monitors total. And the system can actually drive six unique monitors. Or you can plug two monitors each into both of the mini display port and two on the HDMI and leave your Thunderbolt ports free for 40 gigabit per second external I.O. chassis through the Thunderbolt 3. We have a high amperage 19 volt power connector uh, because you can draw up to 290, uh, 230 watts, both with the system and, and the generous number of USB ports, the power adapters can supply power for all of the USB ports as well as the system. And uh, finally, we have a another HD audio jack. This one has a stereo line out, as well as a toss link optical link that will drive out. And that is the back I.O. connectors. All right, and the last thing I want to look at on the back is the cooling solution. You can see the uh, heat sink in there. It's a rather large uh, cooling area. And there's two blowers in here. The heat sink has heat pipes that connect to both the Intel processor and the AMD ATI uh, graphics chip, discrete graphics chip, so that if one or the other is uh, under heavy loads, it benefits from having a very large cooling uh, area and two blowers. And then if you are running something that's both CPU and GPU intensive, then the blower fans can uh, spin up to, to help cool. Uh, under normal conditions, uh, you can use this in a recording studio and not hear it. Uh, even if you're running either the CPU or GPU intensive, you probably won't hear the cooling. It would only be when you get into something that's both CPU and GPU intensive that you would hear the cooling fans kick up. And while I was at the Intel lab, they ran the fans at what they consider full speed, which is 60%. Uh, it was a comfortable level. And uh, one of the engineers went in and bypassed the circuitry to run the fans at full speed, and it was definitely noisy when they're run at 100%. But if this was being used in a computing node or something where you didn't care about the sound, uh, then you can actually get quite a bit of cooling out of these. I think one of the other benefits would be if you have a blower failure, that you're going to still be able to get pretty good operation out of it um, as a single, uh, either GPU or CPU intensive applications with mild throttling. So that's the back.